Here are 10 of the strangest facts about China. Number 10. Counterfeit everything. Nobody can do imitation like China. Knock-off smartphones, designer clothing, and luxury handbags are only a part of the counterfeit business. In recent years, mainland China's copycat profiteers moved into the business of counterfeiting entire shops and brand identities. In 2011, a fake Apple store popped up in the southwestern city of Kunming. It looked so authentic, some employees even thought it was real. In 2015, the police shut it down a fake bank in the eastern city of Nanjing, where depositors reportedly lost nearly $33 million. The fake bank looked exactly like a real one, complete with security guards, computers, and ATMs. In 2014, Hong Kong restaurateur Yen Wang got a surprise one morning. The co-founder of popular Hong Kong restaurant Chachuan Isan Thai and Bar woke up and found a second Chachuan restaurant in Shanghai that completely copied her restaurant. Chachuan's Facebook page was filled with enthusiastic inquiries asking if the shop had opened a new brand in Shanghai. The Shanghai Chachua had the same exterior look and feel as the Hong Kong shop, and even the menu focusing on Northeastern Thai or Isan cuisine looked the exact same. As it turned out, the owners of the fake Chachuan expressed interest in taking the concept to the mainland, but their idea was refused. But that didn't discourage them in the slightest. Number nine, panda, 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 panda. Panda diplomacy in China's use of giant pandas as diplomatic gifts to other countries. The practice existed as far back as the Tang Dynasty when Empress Wu Zetian sent a pair of pandas to the Japanese emperor. But the panda diplomacy comes with a twist. Actually, China is the owner of all the pandas in the world, even if they give it away as a gift. Well, almost, but I'll get to that in a minute. In fact, if you happen to see a panda outside the country, that's because it's on loan. China even owns all future offspring of all pandas. Over the past 15 years, every time China has sent a panda to a foreign zoo, they've required an agreement with the receiving country. According to the contract, the pandas belong to China, and so do any of their offspring. If there are any offspring, they must be returned to China before they turn four years old. The contract also expressly forbids pandas cloning research. However, there are two pandas which are owned by Mexico, Jinjin Jin and Chuan Chuan. This was before China implemented the I own all the pandas policy. But Mexico has agreed that if these pandas have any offspring, they will belong to China. You know what? I'm adopting this policy for all gifts that I give. Number eight, cave dwellers. Did you know there are currently 30 million people in China who live in caves? That's the equivalent to the entire populations of Australia and New Zealand combined. The craziest part? Most of those 30 million people love their living arrangements. The majority of these caves are bigger, nicer, and quieter than a lot of Beijing's apartments. The majority of China's cave dwellers live in Shanxi province, where the porous soil and limestone cliffs make for easy excavation. Most have electricity, many have plumbing, and some come with multiple rooms and a lawn too. More importantly, in a country where people still earn low wages, you can rent a big cave for about $30 a month, or in some cases, you can just make your own and live completely for free. The earth that surrounds the indoor space serves as an effective insulator, keeping the inside of the structure warm in cold seasons and cool in hot seasons. Very little heating is required during the winter, and during the summer, these caves are supposedly as cool as an air-conditioned room. In the last decade, these cave dwellings have been brought to the attention of scientists and researchers have been regarded as an example of sustainable design. Hey, I can't say it's a bad thing. Number seven, driving. Considering the number of people living in major China cities, it shouldn't surprise you that traffic jams are pretty common in China. One mega traffic jam happened back in August 2010 on the Beijing-Tibet Expressway when a traffic jam lasted for an incredible 12 days. Imagine sitting trapped in a 62-mile-long traffic jam for 12 days. This traffic jam wasn't caused by closure or natural disaster. It was simply the result of too many cars clogging the road, particularly a bevy of heavy trucks carrying construction supplies into Beijing, ironically for road work that was intended to help ease congestion. Since no one likes being stuck for hours on end, Chinese companies have found a way to help desperate passengers and make money out of it, of course. Basically, two guys come on a motorbike to the point where you're stuck. One of them goes and sits in your car, while the other one takes you to wherever you have to be. That's actually pretty smart. Number six, ghost cities. 
Between 1884 and 2010, the number of built-up areas in China increased nearly fivefold, from 3,413 square miles to 16,126 square miles. To construct these new urban zones, China used more concrete from 2011 and 2013 than all of the U.S. used in the 20th century. Yet, even in the world's second largest economy, the rate of development has overtaken demand and that's caused some ghost cities to appear around the country. Kangbashi, a new district in the city of Ordos, was built in 2006 to support the burgeoning coal industry in the area. Kangbashi could house 300,000 people, but only 10% of its residences are occupied. Entire apartment blocks, shopping centers, plazas, and parking lots sit empty, waiting for their residents to arrive. Others include Suzhou City and Changshu, Urdo City in Dongsheng District, and Tangliao City in Horkin District. No one can tell for sure whether cities like these will ever fill up with residents. Number five, shared bikes. Sharing bikes to move around in big cities is pretty genius, especially in places with major traffic jams. In China alone, there are now more than 16 million shared bicycles on the road in major cities, and hundreds of companies that offer to rent them out. These are fierce startups that have reshaped the urban landscape, putting bike equipped with GPS and digital locks on almost every street corner. However, because these startups didn't invest in fixing docking stations, riders just leave their bicycles as they please along streets and public squares, slowing down traffic even more and cluttering sidewalks. I'm not sure why these startups would think that people wouldn't just throw these bikes anywhere they want if they didn't have a docking station to return them to. Thieves have taken them by the tens of thousands, essentially selling them for parts. Vandals hang them in trees, bury them in construction sites, and even throw them into lakes and rivers. So it's not surprising many people are mad by the clutter with the bikes. Much of the discussion of the mess has revolved around the Chinese concept of zushi, or inner quality, which is essentially a person's ethical behavior. Chinese often blame lo sushi in criticizing the bad habits or manners of others, and lo sushi might be just the main reason why the shared bike thing isn't working. Number four, Three Gorges Dam. The Three Gorges Dam is a hydroelectric gravity dam that spans the Yangtze River and is the world's largest power station in terms of installed capacity. As well as producing electricity, the dam is intended to increase the Yangtze River's shipping capacity and reduce the potential for floods downstream by providing flood storage space. But the truly crazy part? The dam is so big that it slowed the rotation of the entire planet. There's something called the amount of inertia, which basically describes how fast an object can rotate about its axis. If the object is wider, it can rotate less quickly, which is why Olympic divers curl up into a tight little ball when doing those crazy flips, or when figure skaters spin faster when they bring in their arms. Raise a whole load of river water almost 600 feet into the air, and you're going to affect the amount of inertia for the entire planet. The end result? Earth itself slows down. The effect is, of course, microscopic. Microscopic as in the Three Gorges Dam adds only 0.06 microseconds to the length of the day. Hey, those microseconds are going to add up over time. Number three, bottled water only. Pollution in China is one aspect that's giving everyone quite the headache. As China continues industrializing, pollution has increased exponentially. For instance, on a couple of different occasions, the Yangtze River, which runs through several major cities such as Chongqing in China, turned a bright shade of orange red. Water samples and investigation indicated that the color was probably due to some illegal dumping as there are several major factories along the banks of the river. Air pollution is another major issue in China. The particles that contribute to air pollution is measured in terms of particulate matter. The World Health Organization recommends a daily level of 25 micrograms per cubic meter. For particles less than two and a half micrometers or smaller, and 20 micrograms for particles between two and a half and 10 micrometers. Levels greater than 300 micrograms are serious health hazards. Beijing's air quality frequently surges past a level of 500. And back in January 2013, the level soared to 755, one of the record high measurements in history. In 2016, only 84 out of 338 prefecture level or higher cities reached the national standard for air quality. On a side note, when there's a problem, there's always someone coming up with a solution. Entrepreneur Cheng Guangbao sells soda can sized pockets of air, supposedly from far flung pristine regions of China. 
In 2013, he stated that 10 million cans of clean air have sold in a mere 10 days as pollution levels climbed to record highs. Number two, geese police. Officials in rural parts of China's Xinjiang province are using domesticated geese to aid in law enforcement. Apparently, the geese are more effective than dogs for a variety of reasons. They're aggressive, have exceptional eyesight, and as anyone who has had to deal with them knows, they're loud and nothing can shut them up. Among all poultry, geese are known for being extremely vigilant and having excellent hearing. On top of that, geese are supposedly very brave. Word has it that they spread their wings and attack any strangers that dares enter their uh, territory. In one case, some of the crime-fighting geese helped to catch a suspect who broke into a police station, drugged the police dogs, and stole a motorbike. The geese apparently fanned their wings and shrieked loudly until the sleeping officer on duty woke up and apprehended the criminal. Number one, internet censorship. China operates the largest internet censorship regime in the world, blocking access to thousands of websites, which include Google, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Internet controls also mean news and commentary critical of the ruling Communist Party doesn't make it to the public. Information about events such as the events back in 1989 at Tiananmen Square are almost impossible to find online within China. But millions of Chinese citizens circumvent China's censorship system, known as the Great Firewall, by using a VPN, allowing access to any website. However, it was announced that China will completely block access to much of the global internet as part of a crackdown aimed at suppressing dissent and maintaining the Communist Party's grip on power. The government has ordered China's three telecommunications companies to completely block access to VPNs by February 2018. The three internet providers, China Mobile, China Unicom, and China Telecom, are all state-owned. Authorities have also cracked down on China's top video streaming websites, removed foreign TV shows from online platforms, required users to register to online forums with their real names, and introduced laws that hold chat group admins accountable for what's said in their spaces. New rules also require online news websites to be overseen by government-approved editorial staff and for workers to have reporting credentials from the central government. Here's what's next. He apparently fell in love with Swiss cheese when he was a student in Switzerland. But his love for Swiss cheese eventually spiraled out of control when he became addicted to it. In 2014, Kim got upset at his chefs because they couldn't replicate a mental, his favorite kind of Swiss cheese, properly. So he sent officials to a French culinary school... To